Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Everyone should recognize the 1982 ATC 200. This is the Dover, Pennsylvania project here. Today's adventure, we're going to troubleshoot the Spark. Actually, I spent quite a bit of time troubleshooting the Spark. And let me show you more or less what I have found. First of all, if you're going to troubleshoot the Spark, you have to pull the CDI out of here. And you want to get your handy dandy ohm meter right this lead is clipped to ground right there right you take that you put the black side of the uh, ohm meter right on that and then you take the red side and you of your ohm meter and you start probing this um, this this plug if you're looking at the back of the plug that's what you're seeing so and you go around right black yellow up there green in the corner black sometimes black with a white stripe black with red black with yellow and once again you're looking at the back of the plug you're looking at the plug like this okay so after you do that you got a wire color and the ohm reading to ground and Blue and yellow. Turns out that's from the pulse generator. You get somewhere around 30 ohms. Green, which is ground. You should get less than 1 ohm. Black or black with a white stripe. Um, that is this switch over here on the handlebars used to turn the engine on and off. Sometimes, remember, if you got a key switch or something like that, um, if either one of those is off, you should have less than 50 ohms as a reading between that black or black and white wire and ground. And if the thing is turned on, it should be infinity. You should see no ohm reading. Black and red is the stator. For these guys, um, and I checked several of them because, you know, Harvey has a horde of parts. And they all come in somewhere around 200 ohms. Um, for pit bikes and the Chinese stuff, they come in around 600 ohms. Black with the yellow uh, stripe on it. That goes to the spark coil primary, and that should be less than 2 ohms. So I went through that whole thing with this, and, uh, you know, the readings were good. There was no issue. So, of course, I'm like, hmm... That's not great. No, uh, no slam dunk here, right? Um, next thing I did, I pulled the cover off, and I checked the gap between this thing and the magnet. And I normally set that up with to be as thick as two thin pieces of paper. You just loosen up these screws here. One, two and slide it down. Uh, something to notice, this appears to be new, so I think they've been um, troubleshooting a spark problem, and as a matter of fact, that's my why, that may be why this thing is no longer running. This, that's why this thing was parked back in the day. So anyway, um, I adjusted that. Um, and you guys remember, I did start this up on my um, portable uh, CDI box, and it and it ran, but it was a little it was a little confused. It was kind of like the spark was in and out, and and all not quite right. And that might have been because this gap was pretty big. Um, but once again, they were in here, and I know this has changed for two reasons: a, it looks new, um, and b. Um, the ohm reading, it came in somewhere around 30 ohms. The OEM one for this thing is, is a bit higher than that. It's like 50 to 75. Like 30 ohms better because when it, uh, when it triggers the pulse, it does, it does a better job. So, having done all that, the next thing I started to suspect was the, um, CDI unit. 
So, given that I suspected it, I swapped it out with one of those, you know, less than $10 ones from our favorite auction site, and the spark came back. So, I do have spark now. So, I can finish putting it back together again and ride it. You also notice on this thing that if you take a look here to ground, this is kind of a ground for this guy. It's a ground for the frame. <laughs> and I clipped off of it. I'm using it for a ground on the spark plug to make sure I have a good ground on that. And notice I ran this yellow wire from here and I hooked it up to the block right there. Um, I've been burned before with one of these and it, it, it was about this old too where between the engine and the frame the ground wasn't all that great. Um, I've been burned when the ground hasn't been all that great to the coil. So I went, when I'm troubleshooting a problem even though before I hooked up the ground wire the readings weren't half bad I added that also. So anyway, I do have it sparking now. Um, but, and there's always a but with these things, these engines have a built-in advance. As the RPMs go up, this guy advances, which um, advances your spark, which is really a good thing. The pit bike and all the China stuff, the quads and all that, they don't use a mechanical advance. This is a mechanical advance. As the speed goes up, the weights fly out and it moves it forward. Um, they use an electronic advance. The only way you could get a CDI box for this thing that's proper is going back to OEM whether you get, find some new old stock somewhere or if you um, um, go to Honda and maybe they got one on the shelf which is still new old stock um, so what does that mean that means when you put in one of these um, China ones you kinda end up with a double advance and depending on how your um your your bike runs what you could do is you loosen up this guy and this guy and you could retard the timing back just a tiny little bit which means when you uh when you start it up it might be it might might be just a a tad retarded but um it uh it'll um it, it, it'll it run better um, when you're running them fast. Generally speaking, I normally don't have to bother doing that because as these engines age, the timing chain stretches a little bit, which has a tendency to re retard the spark. So the double advance kind of takes up some of that retarded spark. So there we are. Anyway, I do have it sparking again, though... I don't have it sparking on the OEM CDI. I've seen uh, some people who claim to have the ability to test these things. You know, they get a volt ohm meter and start probing around the various pins and so forth. Um, That kind of only gets you to the first device, right? And I'm not, I'm not sure that gets you to all the connections inside. So, I I don't know. I'm I'm gonna take the idea that your CDI doesn't work, and you can probe it from the outside and and find every single fail mode by probing it from the outside. I'm I'm not thinking so, but maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Um. I guess one could build a test jig because if you got that thing running at 3600 RPM right that's 60 cycles and supposedly 
I guess if you feed 60 cycles into the input of this thing um, and then you know trigger it with a pulse generator and all you can uh, you can you can see a spark um, I don't know somewhere I'm not positive what the voltage would be I'm um, I'm I'm thinking it's somewhere between 20 and 40 volts, but I don't know that. I've always had mixed um, experience w with dynamic testing engines, testing them while they're running to see what kind of voltages you have. Um, maybe a lot of people. Oh, I have no problem. Well, cool. I've uh, I've really I've really not had had a lot of a lot of success with that maybe it's because um, f for my own amusement I have a I have a tendency to use these these cruddy meters um, perhaps if I went and dragged out one of the flukes or westage or, or one of those other other meters um, I would have have better luck looking at RMS values you know peak values and maybe the meter would do some averaging and do a better job telling me what I really have there um, but I, I really don't have much luck looking at dynamic values some people will say you know I turn my my quad over or I pull the string or I kick it and I get these these voltages and all well these meters kind of meant to run at 60 cycles when you're doing AC um, the cheaper ones particularly so I, I'm always a little concerned about you know did you kick it how fast was it turning when you kicked it over what's the sensitivity of your meeting meter at that pulse rate and all that other stuff so personally I'm not a big believer in dynamic measurements so just quickly looking at the back of the plug right the wires are labeled to what colors you should see on the back of the plug and then wire color you see it there you see the ohm value and to the extreme right you see what it is ground pulse generator ground right and you work your way up and down so there we are I troubleshot it I got a spark again I guess I'm gonna put it back together and run it around on the pit bike AC CDI um, and play with that a little bit <sighs> yeah I guess that's it right that's all we need to talk about if there are any questions please get back to me if you like this video please uh, please tell me so uh, subscribe thumbs up uh, positive comment if you're going to give me a thumbs down, that's cool. Just uh, please tell me why. I'd like a comment to go with that thumbs down. Okay, everyone, I want you to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Don't let any fun get by you. Make sure there's a smile on your face and you're out there having a good time. Bye now.